Hey everyone, this is Eric over at NTPro.nl and in this video I'm going to show you how you can troubleshoot your ESXi host with ESX Stop. So first let's SSH into my ESX host and I have to provide uh, the root password. And now I'm on the command prompt of my ESX host and ESX stop can be started by typing ESX top. Okay, so for a lot of users, this is a bit overwhelming. You see a lot of columns and a lot of demons are running, but you have to start with pressing capital V. So this uh, eliminates all the kernel processes and you only see the virtual machine processes running. And by default, we enter the CPU view. This CPU view has some interesting columns. Uh, from right to left, the SWPWT is the time a virtual machine has to wait before he gets uh, memory from its swap file. So if you, ver if you have a virtual machine that is, uh, uh, that is heavily swapping memory from and to the swap file, then you can see how long the VM has to wait before that process completes. This value shouldn't be above 5%. When we look at the percent MLMTD, we can see uh, that the virtual machine must wait before it is scheduled on a core, uh, but it's waiting on purpose. So this value is introduced if you configure a virtual machine with uh, a limit. Then we have the co-scheduling overhead. The CSTP and co-scheduling overhead happens when your virtual machine has multiple CPUs but not all the CPUs can be scheduled and then the virtual machine is partially scheduled but if this queue between the different processes that are running on those virtual CPUs becomes too big the complete virtual machine uh, is descheduled and uh, or the virtual CPUs that can be scheduled have to wait until all the other CPUs can be scheduled. And then you have co-scheduling overhead. And what you see is that sometimes people are adding more CPUs to their VMs, thinking that the VM becomes faster. But if you have a limited number of, of, of physical cores or logical cores in your host, and there are not a lot of scheduling opportunities, then your virtual machine might become slower instead of faster. Uh, the ready time is also a very important value. The ready time allows you to see how long a virtual machine is waiting before it's scheduled. And this ready time shouldn't be above 5%. So this is an overcrowded ESXi host and you see uh, a lot of high ready times, partially created by high co-scheduling overhead. So in this situation, I. I'm, I, I should reconfigure my VMs and I should hand out less virtual CPUs. We can also see what a VM is using and the number of worlds can tell us how many virtual CPUs are configured on the VM. So that's the CPU part. Let's jump to the memory part. If we go to the memory part, we can use capital V again to see uh, all the memory uh, values from our virtual machines. And what we see here uh, is a very interesting column. It's uh, the swap write and swap read. And there's no swap activity in my environment. We can see a swap target. And that's the uh, size of the swap file. Uh, so the target size of the swap file. And if the target is bigger than the current size of the swap file, then the virtual machine will stay swapping or will uh, continue swapping if the target is smaller than the current swap file then the virtual machine will uh, will stop swapping this is very interesting because we can see that there is memory in this swap cut but there's no swapping activity and this can happen if your virtual machine is not configured with uh, the VMware tools and there's no ballooning driver in your VM. In this case, it's a nested ESXi host without VMware tools for ballooning. So that can be a reason. Also, when you had a boot storm, then uh, you can see this phenomenon because uh, 
yeah, swapping has occurred, but there's no swapping anymore. Sometimes people are misinterpreting this value and say, my host is still swapping, but this swap cur is only emptied when the data is actually needed. So when there is no read access on the data in the swap file, it will stay in the swap file. If you want to eliminate this, then migrate the VM with vMotion to another host and then it will be in physical uh, memory. So what's very important is that you can see uh, swap activity and you can see uh, if there is any swapping activity. If you, if you enable the columns, uh, then we can also see if there is um, we can also check if there is memctl so that's capital G and memctl is uh, ballooning so what we see here is that there is a maximum ballooning size and that's 65 percent of the memory size of your VM and we see a ballooning target and we see the ballooning current size and we can see if uh, ballooning is uh, activated or not. So if the driver is not installed in your VM, you will see an, an N and if the driver is the VMEM CTL process is active, you will see a yes right here. Um, yeah, ballooning uh, can be very useful. If you are only ballooning away free memory, then it's no problem. But if you are ballooning away idle memory or active memory from your VM, then uh, it can be uh, a real problem. So no ballooning at this host. I had some ballooning in the past, but I don't see any ballooning right now. We also can activate the column for zip. And zip is capital Q. And when we activate the column for zip, then we can see if there is uh, uh, compression, memory compression on the host. I have too many columns open, open now, so I have to deselect uh, some of these columns to see. Yeah, I think this will be okay. Uh, do we see zip? No, not yet. So let's... Okay. Enter. Yeah, so we see the zip and the unzip uh, uh, actions and we can actually see how many of the cache is used and what's the size of the cache. If so if zip becomes active, it can take 10% of the memory of your virtual machine as a compression cache. When the ratio of memory blocks is higher than 50%, then it will be placed in uh, the compression cache. Cool. Let's jump to the next view. Let's go to cap to, to the uh, to the virtual disks. So what we see here is the view with the virtual disks and or the disks. And what we see is the commands per second. And commands per second are IOPS. So this is 68 commands per second. And it's actually the reads per second plus the writes per second. We can also see the throughput megabytes per second. Uh, read and megabytes per second written and we can see the latency and the latency shouldn't be above 20 milliseconds so I have some slow VMs here uh, we can also take a look at uh, the disk adapters if we go to the disk adapters we have to press uh, the D and then we see all the adapters and we again see the commands per second it's read plus write we see the throughput megabytes uh, read megabytes write and this is also very interesting the DHVG the key AVG and the uh, and the GHVG so the guest latency is the kernel latency plus the device latency and this guest latency shouldn't be above 20 milliseconds um, yeah we can also see the Q depth uh, if we go to the if you go to the extra options, then we can see the uh, length of the queue. And there's one SSD card from Intel, and it has a very big queue depth. Uh, okay, cool. So those are the adapters. We can also go to the P for power states. Power states. That's not really interesting. We can go to the N for network, and that one is because if you look at network, there is a configuration part on the left. And there is uh, a performance part on the right. Oh, 
uh, network. Uh, at the right, we can see packet loss. So sometimes people say, I have a little bit of packet loss. It's okay, but when you see values above 0%, like in my case right here on my ESXi hosts, uh, the, it's a problem. Packet loss is a real problem because the packet must be resended and you will notice that it becomes slow. So dropped packets on, uh, on transmit are not completely your fault because it can be another component in the network, but drop packets on the receive side is definitely something you should uh, look at. We can also see the throughput, megabytes uh, read, megabytes uh, or megabytes transmitted, megabytes received. We can see the packet size and we can see the number of packets. On the left, we can see where a virtual machine is connected to. So you can see all these virtual machines, they, they all have adapters and we can see on which uh, adapter, which physical network card those adapters are connected to. Cool, so that's networking. Uh, we also have the U for disk devices. So I have some SATA disks and some SATA uh, SSDs, but also one Intel uh, device and we can see the queue length. And again, we can see the IOPS, read, write, the throughput, and we can see the latency. And the latency for the guest is the device latency plus the kernel latency. Um, and there's one special uh, thing we didn't show yet, and that is the X. And vSAN is not enabled on this host, but with X you can see vSAN statistics. Okay, Eric Sloof is signing off. Uh, have fun with the ESX top. Bye-bye.